Today I want to get back to the first steps when developer platforms are concerned. I want to enable developers to start a new project. From developer's perspective, that manifest represents an easy interface to specify a programming language, whether to use a database, whether to use GitOps, and a few other things. Such a manifest should be easy to write and push to Git. However, much more needs to happen behind the scenes. I expect such a manifest to be synced into the control plane cluster from where I expect the process that creates and manages Git repositories, files like the initial source code of the application, CI pipelines like GitHub Actions, build scripts like Curtly, GitOps references like uh, those for Argo CD, Kubernetes manifests, and much, much, much more. In other words, I expect an easy interface for everything and complexity hidden in a control plane and behind an API. As a result of all that, I pushed that manifest to a Git repo, a repository was created, a new branch was generated, files were created in that branch, a pull request was created as well, a pipeline is running and building binaries and images, running tests and modifying manifests to GitOps repo, Argo CD is synchronizing resources into the cluster, database is being created in a hyperscaler of choice, and so on and so forth. That single manifest created everything required to start working on a new application, from developer tasks all the way until it is running in production. It's easy, yet it does not sacrifice anything. It is fully transparent with everything stored in Git. It's secure since no one has access to that cluster. It's fully automated with CI pipelines and Argo CD synchronization and whatever else is being done and I forgot to mention. Here's how all that works and how I did it. There are quite a few things we need to figure out to make the system as one we're exploring today. We need to create an interface, an abstraction that will make it easy for people to define what they need, while at the same time, they are not overwhelmed with unnecessary complexity. Then there is a mechanism that will create and manage a Git repository in the initial branch and a PR. We also need to generate some files like the sample source code, CI pipelines, build scripts, readmes, uh, and quite a few others. We also need to configure Argo CD or Flux, both are options, to synchronize manifests from that new repo and a way to create and manage databases and quite a few other things. As you can probably guess, we need multiple types of definitions and tools to accomplish all that. So let's start from the beginning. The first thing we need to do is create a control plane that will do the work and at the same time generate the API people will use to interact with it. You probably already know which tool I picked for that part, right? It will do a cross plane. Now, to be clear, this video is about the process rather than specific tools. I made some choices since I wanted to make this practical, yet you should be able to switch any of the tools I use for something else. I'm advocating for a process and it's up to you to say, I do not want to do it using that tool. I'll do the same using a different one. One way we could approach the problem is with Crossplay. And that's the one I'm using today. Among others, we could use the GitHub provider to manage the state of different types of resources. Here's an example of a manifest with a few managed resources. If we would apply that to the cluster where Crossplane is running, we would get a GitHub repository with a .gitignore, repository file, and a branch. That, however, is not the direction we will take. Remember, one of the requirements is to make it easy for developers by exposing things that matter and hiding those that don't. We'll accomplish that by creating a composition or to be more precise, using a composition already created. Now, if you're not familiar with crossplay compositions, you might want to watch that video over there uh, first. It's part of a crossplay tutorial I published a while ago. Here's an example of what developers would need to define to get almost everything they need to start working on a project. In that example, a hypothetical developer wrote a manifest with a kind set to GitHub claim. That is a cross-plane claim based on a composition that we will explore later. For now, the only thing that matters is that the composition created a new API endpoint, a CRD, in the Kubernetes cluster, and anyone with sufficient permissions can create resources based on it. The developer chose to make the repo public and to use TTLSH as the registry for container images. The application should be written in Go, 
it should be accessible through myrepoacme.com and it should run in the A team namespace. The developer chose to enable the PostgreSQL database in AWS and that it should be version 16.2. The user or organization where the repository should be located is DevOps Paradox. Finally, the developer chose, and I repeat always, the developer, not me, chose to enable GitOps using the repository cross gh in the organization vparsec. A lot needs to happen for all those requirements to be fulfilled, yet from developer's perspective, it is as easy as it can get. Now, since it would be silly to enable direct access to the cluster so that people can execute commands like kubectl apply, we already have Argo CD up and running and configured to monitor the repository we are in right now. More specifically, it is set to monitor git repos directory in this repo. So the only action we should perform is to copy that file to that directory and push the changes. Now, I'm fully aware that some people do not like writing YAML, even when it's as simple as that one. For them, we might want to add a developer portal through which they could fill in some fields in a form and click uh, the execute button, for example. That could be Backstage or Port or any other similar solution. We will not do that part today. But if you are interested, I can, for example, show how to integrate everything we'll do today into a portal. Would that be interesting? If it would, please let me know in the comments. And apart from saying, yes, do it, let me know which portal you would like me to use. And I will extend this material with the UI that you chose. Now let's get back to the task at hand. We can, for example, trace all the resources created by applying that claim by executing cross plane beta trace command. We can see that a repository was or will be created, that there is a branch and a pull request and that a bunch of files are there as well. It may take a few moments for those resources to become available. While waiting though, we can quickly go through the process that happened so far. We push the cross-plane claim to the git repo. Argo CD is monitoring that same repository and once it detected a new manifest, it synchronized it into the cluster where cross-plane is running. Cross-plane on the other hand, took that claim and expanded it into managed resources, which in turn started talking to GitHub API and creating the repository branch pull request and some files. Now let's confirm that's what really happened by opening the repo in a browser. We can see the init branch was created and that it contains all the files one might need to start working on a project. The CI pipeline is there and Kubernetes manifests are in the Kate's directory. Specifically, there is upclaim that is an instance of the abstraction required to run backend applications and SQL claim that manages PostgreSQL in the chosen hyperscaler. Git ignore is there as well. Earth file can be used to execute any type of tasks, including building and pushing images. Then there is readme markdown with the creative text, devbox.json that can be used to install any tools we might need. And finally, main.go contains the sample source code. All those files in the init branch are grouped into a pull request that contains instructions with steps that I did not yet automate, but I could and I will but not today. Those instructions are fairly simple. Enable read and write permissions to GitHub Actions, add PAT token or GitHub token as a repository secret, merge the pull request, execute the GitOps workflow that will add a reference to the newly created repository to the GitOps repo monitored by Argo CD. As I said before, I should automate those as well. I'm ashamed that I didn't yet, but for now, those manual steps, while not ideal, should do. Once we merge the pull request, a build of a pipeline is executed. It's a simple one, which works well for a demo, but you might need to expand when used seriously. The workflow, among other things, builds the binary and the image and pushes it to a container image registry. Once done, it updates Kubernetes manifests in that repo. Since Argo CD is watching a separate Git repo, which by now has application referencing this repository, those changes will eventually be synced into the cluster. We can confirm that's what really happened by tracing crossplane resources managed by the app claim. We can see that the app claim crossplane GH demo was created and that in turn it created three objects. 
we got the deployment and ingress and the service. Those cross play managed resources created Kubernetes resources and we can confirm that as well by retrieving all core resources as well as ingress. And there we go. The deployment was created and as a result, it created a replica set which created a single pod. On top of those, there is a service and an ingress. When we created the initial manifest that resulted in creation of the repo, the branch and the PR and all the files, we specified that there should be a database as well. Let's see whether that happened by executing yet another trace. We can see that a bunch of AWS resources were created or are in the process of being created. It takes a few minutes until all AWS resources are available. So let's fast forward for a few minutes and try again. All database components are up and running and we can confirm that it's real and not the result of some witchcraft and wizardry by opening console of whichever hyperscaler we chose, in my case that's AWS, and confirm that the database is indeed there. The application is now fully operational. It was built, it was validated and it was deployed. From now on, all that developers need to do is clone the repo, work on the application code and push changes back to the repo. That's it. That's all that needs to be done. It's easy by design. After the application repository and the branch and the pull request and the files were created, we merged the PR. That triggered a CI workflow that, among other things, built the binary and the image, pushed the image to the container registry and updated manifests and pushed them back to the repo. Argo CD is watching the GitOps repo that contains a reference to the application repo. Once it detected changes, it synced them into the cluster where Crossplane is running. Crossplane, in turn, takes the claims synced by Argo CD and expands them into managed resources. In this specific case, the application claim turned into Kubernetes resources, while the database claim ended up as hyperscaler resources, which in my case are AWS resources. From here on, all that the developers need to do is push changes to the repo and the process is repeated. And that's the process. That's what it is. Everything is always in Git. Bunch of actions are executed by CI workflows and states are managed by Argo CD or Flux, if you choose that one. Developer-friendly API interfaces are created by Crossplane, which at the same time manages all kinds of resources, from those in Kubernetes through those in GitHub, all the way until those in hyperscalers like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. That leaves us with only one unanswered yet very, very important question. How did I do all that? Well, most of the work is done by Crossplane Compositions. Here's the one I created to manage GitHub resources. The problem is that it would take quite some time to explain everything going on in that composition. It's a problem. Since you already have a video that explains compositions, I will refer you to that one over there. You will notice that there are only a few lines of YAML with the bulk of that composition written in KCL. It happens to be my language of choice when defining state of resources since Crossplane supports it through functions. And I combine the two. If you're not familiar with KCL, you might want to watch those videos over there. Over there, look at them. There is a lot more that we should add to a solution like the one we just explored. We probably want to have some policies. Database servers should include database schemas. Workflows should execute tests and other types of tasks we missed. There are plenty of others that I did not even mention. That should not matter, especially since it will differ greatly. It will be different from one organization to another. What does matter are principles. And if those I presented today fit you, you should be able to modify the solution to be closer, if not 100%, what you need. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.